Hello friends, uh, Jeff here from Squadron. Welcome back to the next installment of the online build of the Mosquito. Today we're going to tackle the fuselage. Last time we closed it, now we're going to prepare it, sand it, make it smooth and also we're going to install the tailplane. So let's get at it. First of all, of course, we take the tape off. I use the uh, yellow model masking tape, but honestly, any painter's masking tape will, will work, will do the trick. The good thing about the Mosquito, or Tamiya's mos Mosquito, is that it fit really well. I don't foresee any major problems in getting the fuselage all smoothed out for painting. When gluing a fuselage or wing halves together, sometimes there is a lot of, or a little bit of tension in between where you get some pressure on there to get them lined up. And I found out that I'm a big advocate of using super glue to use basically everything. But I found out also that whenever there is pressure, in this case uh, the fuselage for instance, if you tack it with super glue and you glue it and then you do another bead of super glue over it for sanding purposes, that sometimes there is the possibility that it will split, that you get like a hairline crack because eventually by even tapping it or putting it down too briskly that you get like a crack where the super glue basically doesn't hold. It doesn't happen very much but to avoid that risk I always like to do the major part of the fuselage or the wing halves with plastic cement or plastic weld. Then when it's, once it's dry the, the plastic is fused together and you have a lot less risk of running into problems later on. After that's done, like in this case, I go usually, and I'll show you that in a minute, I'll go over it with the sanding stick. In this case, since it's already pretty smooth, I'll use a number two, uh, a medium sanding stick. And then once that's done, I place a small bead of super glue along the seam line and let that dry. I prefer to do that instead of using putty because super glue, once it gets hard, it's less porous. So when you do that and the super glue is, becomes dry, then once you sand it and you buff it, you'll have a, a lot smoother transition than using, for instance, regular putty. So let's see what happens. Now, many of you and or most of you will know if you have some major differences in between the two fuselage halves when one half sticks a little bit more than the other sticks up a little bit more than the other there is always the scraping method which what you do is you remove a lot more plastic than you do with the sanding stick and then afterwards you go over it with the sanding stick but like I said before the Tamiya mosquito, especially the mosquito doesn't really need this. You only do that usually with older kits or low pressure kits when the fuselage doesn't line up 100%. You better go over it and make a few scrapes so, uh, and it, you take a lot more plastic off and it makes sanding a lot, a lot easier. I prefer a number two. If, if the fuselage or the plastic is already smooth, I like to use a, a medium sanding stick because if you use a coarse one, like in this case, the coarse one will bite into the plastic a lot more and which leaves a lot more scratches and then you have to clean that up with a medium and eventually a fine sanding stick so in this case uh, medium will do the trick another thing also is that you have to take into account and again in the mosquito since the real plane was made out of wood there are not a lot of panel lines so in this case you don't run the risk of losing a lot of detail, surface detail that you eventually have to repair. So that's a plus too. There's a couple things here, a couple access hatches I think, uh, that you have to be careful and try to sand in between. But other than that, the whole fuselage is one smooth piece. Now these sanding sticks are, are it, it doesn't have to be necessarily a sanding stick, you can use sandpaper. But I like the sanding sticks because it gives you even pressure all the way. And also, you can use these with water. If you put some water on there, it will work either way. With water, it tends to speed up the process a little. Make sure you stay away from, as much as you can, from the little access hatches here. They're very subtly, uh, there's not much 
it doesn't take much to get them removed or to accidentally blemish them or remove them. Try to be as gentle as you can. Also, another thing for future references, it's always good to, I didn't do it this time, because this is a little tricky, there's a lot of uh, stuff sticking out from the cockpit, but to avoid getting a lot of dust inside the cockpit, since there is a lot of dust coming from the sanding, it can get into the cavities and the crevices of a, of a cockpit, so it would be wise to basically mask it off so you, you avoid getting too much dust in there but in this case it's okay uh, it's wide open and I think if I blow in it a few times uh, it will remove most of the dust out of there it's also good to have before you start a sanding job it's also good to have a couple sanding sticks available you know I got like a, a medium which is the most important you got the coarse one for more difficult areas and also uh, if you have to get more bite into the plastic this will do the trick but if you have a medium and then you have either a fine or a super fine or in this case it's a tri grit for buffing purposes that's basically all you need now sometimes while you're sanding and there is a area somewhere or a little spot where you can't reach it with a stick I'm sure you guys thought of it too but uh, sometimes just slice a piece off you know like this or I try to fillet it as you see like this and now now you have sandpaper but it's especially it's, it's good for for tiny places where the sanding stick won't reach you can use it, if you slice a little bit off, you use it as a, a, a sandpaper actually. So let's say for instance like here, where you have some detail and the sanding stick will do more damage than good, then it's better to, if you, if you don't have sandpaper laying around or a little bit of scrap sandpaper laying close by, you can easily slice that off and go there in between and be a lot more it, 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 you will be a lot more or able to be a lot more careful than uh, using the sanding stick of course then you uh, have ruined your sanding stick but you can always buy another one when you sand along the fuselage or in big areas like a big 132nd scale airplane there's a big surface uh, and, and also in, in, in smaller places but it's always good to go in, in the, these round motions instead of doing it this way if you do it this way you get a lot better result now when you see that there is an area or a little tiny spot where the plastic at the edge of the fuselage half curved a little inside sometimes when you put two fuselage halves together and it's a, it's a big surface it could be by sometimes by warpage or just even if, if the plastic is in a, in a, a little bit deformed in a, in a certain spot uh, don't panic although the rest is lining up and you have a little dent in there that's where the super glue comes in that's where you put the bead of super glue in there that will fill it up and then you can sand it again so don't try to scrape it too much just fill it up with milli, uh, with milliput putty or in this case super glue because if you do if you scrape too much you might do more damage than good I'm gonna leave this piece of tape on just for now because it keeps the as I mentioned in the previous chapters I am not going to detail the gun compartment I just gonna have it shut I just tested this cover so I taped it on there so just for sanding purposes I'm gonna leave it on now another trick is and you all know that I'm sure most of you do is that whenever it feels soft you can always hold it to the light you know and then you can you can see in the reflection if you really get everything smoothed out or if there are some problem areas or dents in there that you have to send extra but I think in this case everything looks pretty good uh, it didn't take too much as you can see it only took a few minutes to get everything lined up to apply super glue uh, the best thing is to find an old lid somewhere that you have laying around and you put like a couple drops of super glue on there also I, out of experience I learned that the back end of a brush, of a thin paint brush, 
is the perfect uh, medium to use to apply the super glue. Why? Because it's easy controllable. You have at least something that fits in your hand and it's, 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 it just feel that way. Also the end of the brush is rounded. So you will be able to scoop up super glue and then just guide it and it will roll back up the end of the brush. So as you can see, it's very easy. Okay, I think we got it all, all covered. And as you can see, you have a nice little bead of super glue that will serve as putty or as a way to, once, once you sand it, it's gonna give you a, a very smooth, non-porous joint. Now, super glue doesn't really take all that long to, to sand, but my suggestion is, even if it's dry and even dry by the touch of, of your finger, I, I would just put it away for at least five minutes, 10 minutes before you start sanding. In the meantime, let's look at the tail plane. It's always good to have a sanding stick ready instead of sandpaper because a sanding stick you can put pressure on there but still just it stays even. We do the same thing with this. Uh, always make sure you get all the ejection taps off. Another fine feature that the Mia has and they have it going on for a while on their high-end kits is that instead of having the ejection taps on the piece itself. They put it on a spot where it's easy to remove, where it's easy to clean without damaging the contours or if you have a sm like a small fragile piece, it's very easy. They, they really engineered this kit very, very well. Another good thing to have close is the finishing pad, the multi-task uh, finishing pad, because that will really take all the fibers off. Okay, now let's get our plastic weld out and start with gluing the two halves together. And this, in, in cases like this, or in, in uh, assemblies like this, you can see the craftsmanship of Tamiya. You know, there is hardly any opening, any gap. There is actually, there is none. It's a perfect fit. You don't even have to use tape to keep it together. It's, it's just so well engineered. Now, just in case, we'll put like some plastic weld over the seams and also on the back. Got in there. Put this away for now, for... and then let's see what the next step is. Okay, it's the mud guard of the tail wheel. So now we're uh, going to apply the mud guard, as you can, as you name it, or as you can name it, uh, of the tail wheel. Again, it's in parts like this, like this framework for the mudguard, that you can see where Tamiya spent extra care to make it simple when you have to clean it and you have to trim down the ejection tabs. There is hardly any work to it. They also, there is not much of a seam because usually when you have like a two-piece mold where, of, if you're familiar with plastic injection, that uh, you always have in some pieces like you have a crease there or a line uh, and uh, you need to really take care of that but for now again they did a wonderful job in this and there's hardly any cleanup
Next we'll do is the ailerons. With the, the actually stabilizers, just tap it with some plastic weld, press the top on it. And apply, just for all safety, a bit of plastic weld on the joints. This is one, and we do exactly the same for the other side. Tamiya gives you two versions to put the elevators neutral or in the down position. Since I'm gonna make the uh, plane stationary with too much, without too much frill, I think I better opt for the neutral position. But at the end of the day, it's, it's no big deal, either in any position, it's no big deal. I also noticed that I made a mistake in the previous aileron, in the other one. You see this tab here, I had to leave that on and in the other uh, part of the aileron I cut that off so I'm gonna try to reattach it I don't think at the end it's a big problem but I just wanna I, I just didn't get it first time so I need to restore that or I don't think it will affect anything but just to be on the safe side I just wanna reattach that and repair it There we go. Just secure it a little bit better. Like a little color, color of uh, super glue around it. Now that we made the ailerons and the tailplane, I'm just gonna put it on the side for a little bit uh, to let it dry. And then uh, in the meantime, the super glue across the seam of the fuselage is dry enough for sanding, so let's address that. Also guys, take your time, there's no need to rush. If you apply too much super glue at one time, you can feel that it's it might not be completely hardened out. So if that's the case, just put it away for a couple hours and sand it again. So after the number, well the medium, after the uh, medium sanding stick, uh, I always try to do it with a, a fine or super fine or extra fine just to get all the scratches out and buff it it's very important that while you're sanding that you take good care of it sanding can be very boring you have to be absolutely sure you have a, a smooth transition of the two fuselage halves and that you can't see any seam because nothing is worse when you start airbrushing and finally when you apply a paint uh, a layer of paint and you can see the seam or any discrepancy or blemish on your seam and then you have to do it all over again. So it's better to take your time, triple check that everything is covered, that everything is smooth and then the rest is just uh, gravy. Okay, let's do the same with the underside. Let's start with a medium sanding stick. You can see here that you really can see the bead of super glue and that proves to me that the seam between the two fuselage halves is completely filled up. All we need to do is just trim that out and smooth it and you will have a perfect fit or a perfect lineup. Super glue by itself, once you put a bead on top of the fuselage halves, it's a lot harder to sand it down, but the transition is a lot smoother than let's say modeler putty or milliput. While putty will sand a lot better, it also is more porous and there is a chance that it still might seep through through your paint or it leaves like like a flat spot once you cover it over while super glow doesn't have that problem it's a little bit harder to sand but the result is more rewarding now like i mentioned a little while ago i only i applied the super glow on there and then i waited for about maybe 10 15 minutes but once i start sanding it it felt a little bit 
gooey or a little bit rubbery. It wasn't completely hardened out. So the harder the super glue get, the easier it is to sand. So in this case, I didn't wait long enough, but for time purposes, I did it. I sanded it anyway. But if you wait for an hour or even two hours or even leave it overnight, it will go a lot better. You will have a lot more grip with your sand, uh, sanding stick than I have now. But so far, uh, I think I got it covered. And also remember, the more super glue you use, the, the thicker the bead, the longer you have to wait to have it dried out. Super glue is not always the right choice for a replacement of putty. But this said, I like it especially on whenever you have to cover a joint that is visible and you want to obtain a smooth transition and try to eliminate further problems while airbrushing, that's where super glue is the way to go. In other cases, when you have to fill up a big hole or a big dent, there is of course the super glue gap filler, but there are moments or there are areas or situations where you have to use putty. This is just to show you that whenever there is airbrushing involved in a critical place where you can see it, where it becomes obvious, that's where super glue is the best way to use as a filler or just as a safety net to prevent further complications while airbrushing. Putty is better because it, you can sand it better. It, it's easier to sand, you take a lot more, uh, with every stroke you take a lot more away, even with milliput. But also when you airbrush over it, sometimes the paint will, because putty is a little bit more porous than anything else, it will absorb the paint and you, you end up with, with a blemish in your paint work. So that's why on top of any construction like a fuselage, I like to use, I just don't want to end up with a mess or avoid any problem. Now it's just a matter because I got everything smoothed out, uh, all the, like the beads of super glue are all smoothed out. Now it's just a matter of buffing it up and I use there like a, either a fine or extra fine sanding sticks. I also use a little bit of water. I'll do that later. It's a little bit more time consuming so I think you, you get the picture. Just make sure that you get a smooth transi tra transition, that the seam is completely gone and the rest you can do because buffing will take a little bit longer and I like to work with water too. I'll, I'll show that in some next video but I think uh, you all are familiar with the procedure. So this is just to show you, instead of milliput, you can use super glue. Okay, let's see what's going on with the tailplane. I used plastic weld to, along the joints and all that kind of stuff. Plastic weld is, again, there is some division amongst modelers. Plastic weld, the only thing I don't like about plastic weld is that it, it evaporates immediately. Once you put it on your brush and, and you bring your brush to the, to the part that you have to glue, sometime by the time you get there, and it's only a fraction of a second, it's already uh, evaporated and you have to do it again. Sometimes you have to put multiple layers on top of each other just to make the plastic melt that you have time enough to put the top part on there. The good thing about plastic weld is that since it dries so fast, you don't have to wait as long like with, let's say, uh, plastic cement. So once you get the plastic weld on there, you put like a little bit on top of it so everything melts together. You only have to wait maybe 10, 15 minutes and you're ready to sand. So I did this part uh, about uh, 10, 20 minutes ago and I can already see and feel that it's ready to, to just uh, smooth the joints. Also partly, and I don't want to sound like an old record, but it's also the engine, Tamiya's engineering that made it absolutely super tight here. There's no, absolutely no crease, no seam. Uh, it's very easy. Once you apply a little bit of plastic weld or plastic cement, uh, if you don't have it handy, it doesn't take long and it doesn't take much to make a, a, perfect, a perfect joint and a seamless transition between upper and lower part of the of a wing, let's say. Same things with the ailerons, same. Uh, I'm, in, I'm especially impressed with the back of the ailerons. You see some manufacturers, they, and it's all of course a part of engineering and a part of cost reduction that some companies, they really don't pay attention on the edges, but it's very important, especially in a model that is very visible, like a, like a 30 second scale, you come closer to the to realism by having very, very thin 
edges on the ailerons and Tamiya captured this wonderful. Again, there is no seam whatsoever. I just glued this about 10-15 minutes ago and there is absolutely no seam. It's not even necessary to sand it, but just to put my mind at ease, I sand it anyway. But it really, really doesn't take much. And in this case, I use a, a very extra fine. I got a tri-grit here. This is the buffing side of the stick. There's hardly any grain on there or any grit, I'm sorry. But I use the extra fine to do the sanding in. All right, so after we got all the tailplane is all glued and sanded. It's time to put it put it together. Just gonna put a little bit of glue on the tabs there. Not too much, it's not necessary. And again, it's a smooth joint. I'll do the same thing with the other side. As you can tell, I don't know if you can see it, but again, it's very, very smooth. Once it's glued in place, there's absolutely no gap, so no filling whatsoever. So it's just wonderful engineering. So we see absolutely no gap at all. Just gonna put a little tiny bit of super glue in there to hold everything in place. Now I'm gonna secure this with some plastic weld very gently. I'm gonna make one stroke and just made it like very easy. Be careful, don't do too much. Just once is enough. And that will secure it one more part. And there you have it, tailplane in place, everything lined up. Now it started to, it starts to look like a mosquito. Okay guys, that was it for now. Next time when we come back, we'll tackle the engines. Jeffy here, signing off.